Hey, I'm Del Shanzi, and I am here with Super Troy. Super Troy, my super paramotor pilot. <laughs> hey, you're not a horse. Hold on. Okay. That's not my horse sound. That's my. That's blowing, not the horse sound. Blowing bubble sound. I don't know. Okay, we're talking about paramotors and the very specific details that make a life and death difference. Uh, there are 304, uh, 27 pages, and we are now on page six. So, Kevlar line for minimal wind resistance and aerodynamics. Um, this one does have fairly aerodynamic string. Uh, it is just cheap string, but it is at least you know, a little bit thinner. So the Kevlar line, even though it's 400 pounds strength, uh, it has a lot less wind resistance, which you'll see on a lot of units like a Blackhawk, they have this rope netting, which just has an enormous amount of drag. And even worse, they hold it on with about 120 Velcros all facing into the wind. So you have an enormous amount of drag or like the Scout that puts stators in front of the prop which creates a lot of drag. And the more drag you have, the less effective your thrust is, the less your climb rate is. So it's another one of those reasons that you'll see the flat top has a much better climb rate than other units. Can so wind resistance, you're next. All right, minimal tubing for optimal aerodynamics. 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 So what's that one? It, the tube is, since it's round, like the wind goes over it, and it's aerodynamic. Nice try. No? But no, <laughs> that doesn't make too much difference. The, it's the amount of tubes. Uh, the, this particular fresh breeze actually doesn't look too bad because it doesn't have that many tubes facing into the wind. But each tube facing into the wind creates a lot of drag. And so when you count the number of tubes as you go around, it's that number of tubes facing into the wind that also creates drag, as well as uh, the, the Velcros. So like here on the Fresh Breeze, if you notice this big Velcro is facing almost into the wind. And so you have Velcros facing into the wind where with the flat top, the Velcros are kind of put in between the dual hoops. So you have as many as possible that are parallel into the wind with as few as possible and only where necessary where the Velcros are facing into the wind. A lot of units do do that, where they have a ton of Velcros and just a whole lot of drag facing into the wind. Uh, but if you count with most units, the flat top has the least amount of tubes you can actually have facing into the wind and still have all of that work. Because a lot of them will have a lot of extra tubes and every tube you add, adds drag. So more stuff facing into the wind, the more drag you have. Uh, Kevlar line for resistance to chemicals. So Did you know that one? So if you landed a power plant, then the lines won't break? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's 400 pound strength. Okay, so Kevlar line is resistant to chemicals. Guess what happens if you trip and fall over with a fresh breeze? It dumps gas all over oh. you. Well, that gas is gonna affect the lines and stuff like that. So that is kind of another cool feature of the Kevlar. Of course, if you tip a flat top upside down, it doesn't drip gas, where a fresh breeze literally has a hole in it. So it has a, because uh, you have to have a breather tube, and their breather tube with a lot of units, if you trip and fall down, it's dumping gas all over you, where the flat top has a one-way valve, so it allows air into the tank, but it doesn't allow uh, fuel to spill out, which is pretty important. So varying diameter tubing for minimum weight and maximum strength and aesthetics. The, so the flat top has a bunch of different thicknesses of tubing. So we use the thin tubing where we don't need as much strength and then thicker tubing where we do need the strength. So you have the lightest possible weight while also having the oh. highest amount of strength. strength. So you have the strength. So like the tubing back here is 035 wall. This tubing is 065 wall. This tubing is 083 wall. That tubing is 125 wall. And so you have all different thickness tubing, again, trying to make it absolutely as light as possible uh, while having the highest level of strength. And the flat top here that has about 200 pounds of thrust, uh, this unit weighs 54 pounds. This unit weighs 65 pounds. 
So the, it's 11 pounds different. So the flat top's 11 pounds lighter, but this unit only has 140 pounds of thrust, where this one has 200 pounds of thrust. So the, the weight, it, you know, it really starts to add up for what you have. Okay, strong skids absor absorb impact during a crash or fall. So, Troy, go ahead and sit on that harness there. Just, yeah, sit on the seat there for a second. Yeah, don't break it off like I did. There you go. So put your legs out in front of you. So basically your butt is pretty much on the ground. So when you hit there, your butt's on the ground. So when you smack in or crash in any way, it's basically your butt and your spine that's going to take all of that impact. Try the flat top. It's just like crushing me. Yeah, it is kind of funky how that works. Eh. Up, up. There you go. Okay, let's see if we can get this to balance again. There we go, flat top. Bingo, buckle your thing. And while you're there. So as you can see his butt and in flight, go ahead and tilt back a little bit because you're not leaning forward in flight. In flight, you can see he's got about 18 inches under his butt. That gives you an enormous amount of crumple zone which really can absorb a stall, which would resemble about jumping off a one-story house roof. So with that type of an impact, that much crumple zone can easily be the difference between life and death or a broken back at the very minimal. If you jump off a house roof with that, you're going to break your back or die. I mean, it's just that simple. And that's why you have 19 dead in a single year on units like this, and nobody's ever died in the history of the sport on units like this. Okay, go ahead and stand up, Troy. This is 13-year-old Troy. He just turned 13. I need to adjust my straps. Aha. Uh -huh. We're going to see if a 13-year-old can stand up. You twisted it. I was going to say, I thought I did. There you go. Put it back. There we go. Sound good? Okay, it's good. And put it in. Bingo. And hook in. Bingo. And back it up by Velcro so you have a quick release harness. It's backed up by Velcro on top of being quick release. It's super easy to adjust shoulder straps. That can be a pain on other units. And go for it. Got it. There you go. Okay. My camera bag. <laughs> there we go. Okay, sit it back down. Oh yeah. Okay, sit down. All right, stand back up again. This is a 12 year old picking up the most powerful unit. There you go, that's reality. And this one has gas in it <laughs> and a bag and a reserve. So this is a fully loaded, ready to roll unit. There you go, okay, go ahead and sit back down. There you go, and out you go. Oh, I wanna stay in it though. <laughs> Get out, okay, hop out, bingo. And up he goes. Okay, there we go. So even a 13 year old can pick up a flat top ninja, which is the powerful unit. I'm not even gonna have you try and pick that up because there's no way. Uh, okay, strong skids absorb impact in a crash. Obviously you can see 18 inches of crumple zone versus your butt is basically on the ground and any impact, it's your spine taking that hit. Okay, rounded skids help slide to a stop in case of a fast landing. So notice the skids are rounded. These have a little rounding to them, but even still your butt's basically hitting. A lot of units do come to a 90 degree at the bottom. So you'll see a straight down, straight back at the bottom of the unit. So as soon as that butt hits, it can catch and dig into the ground whipping the unit forward, which will really smash your face into the ground. So it's important that you have nice rounded skids so that you can slide in as opposed to have it dig into the ground and just whip you face forward. I've had Not a, a couple good plan. of skid landing, so I know that you like slide right in. I'm like coming in. And I, I used, it was really hard for me to pick it up at first, but now I'm doing better. But now uh, sometimes I'd actually like slide on my skids. It's pretty yeah. Fun. Yep. Yeah, if you do, if you come in too fast with a flat top, your natural reaction is to just put your feet out in front of you yeah. and brace for landing. 
Well, when you put your feet out in front of you, it puts your skids in the perfect position to catch that whole impact. So the skids hit the ground, you slide to a stop. Where with a unit like this, if you landed like that, that is not gonna end pretty. That's gonna be ugly because the super high center of gravity, it is gonna wanna flip over the top of your head and jackknife you and smash your face into the ground. Very, very bad plan. And it's, it's resulted in numerous injuries. So the goal is to try and help people so they know how to prevent themselves from getting injured in all the same ways over and over and over. Okay, wide frame allows for access port. This is a cool one. So here's your fresh breeze. How do you tune it? You can get your arm you can get your arm in, but there's no real good holes with which to reach back and be able to adjust or deal with your motor while the engine is running. That was an issue with having that small frame because you just don't have enough room to get a hand through there. Where the flat top, you can reach right through very easy. Since the frame is wide, you can reach back, you can prime it, no problem, or you can reach back, adjust the carburetor and tune it while you're doing it. So you have a big hole right behind the pilot where you actually can reach back and adjust it or tune it or work on it or pop a spark plug cap or whatever you have to do. So that is a pretty cool difference where you have the access to do that. Uh, access support allows you to access carb, primer bulb, master kill switch from the front, which is very, very nice. Uh, so if you do need it to adjust it, of course the flat top ninjas do come fully tuned, ready to go. Um, where units that don't have that really nice engine do not come that way. So you would actually have to tune most units when you get them. But the flat top Ninja comes pre-tuned and we put a sticker on it very specifically so you won't adjust it. All right, here we go. Access port allows for tuning in flight or from front of motor. So yes, in flight, you can actually reach back and prime your unit if you needed to. Um, and you can reach back and you can get to your engine during flight. So if you had some catastrophic issue, you can reach back, pop the spark plug cap off if you needed to emergency kill the motor for any reason, if it locked full throttle. So you do have that ability to reach through and get back to that very easily. Um, where it's, it's gonna be a lot harder or impossible on some units to try and get back and reach and get to things in flight. Hey, with the wide, uh, with the wide uh, gap. gliding, you can stick your arm through it. Uh, yeah, but you're so far away, trying to get, really get to it is gonna be tricky. See, try and get to the back of the carb from there. Wait, what's the carb? That's the carb right there. That's the carb? Yeah. Wait. This? Yeah, see, you're not, you're not coming directly in it. Try, imagine trying to get a screwdriver back there. See, now look at the flat top. So now look at the flat top. You can get right to it. Yeah, you can literally reach it. Also, you, you can, can get, right and notice where, how close the engine is. See how the engine literally, oops, there's the engine, one finger. Here, you're reaching your whole arm back to try and get at it. Huge, so it's a lot further back there. So you got a lot more issues, which that can really come up in flight if you have any issues. Okay. Motor mounted upside down for low center of gravity. This was primarily the Simonini engines. Uh, like this one does have it like that. The engine is mounted upside down. Um, with the flat top, they're mounted in such a way you have a very low center of gravity. The gas tank is mounted at the bottom, which is very, very important. Um, like this one has the gas tank uh, up at the top. So what happens when you lean to the side if you go to turn right, all that gas, the weight of the gas, wants to make it fall to the right. And so it makes it a little more awkward. Hold that one up. Where the flat top, if you lean it to the left, the gas tank goes up to the right. So it's, it's automatically stable because it's, it has the low center of gravity, where a high center of gravity is automatically unstable. So all sorts of little deal details like this. We got many more to go. But we'll be back next time on the 304 Reasons the Flat Top is the only paramotor to fly.